James chapter number 1. I'm going to read verse number 22 this morning. <clears throat> Bible says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, is like a man, beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth away, and straight forth forgetteth what manner of man he was. Now, the book of James deals a lot with the correlation, okay, the relationship between believing and doing. Okay, in fact, I went, well, I can't say that. There's a lot of preaching out of James. But one of the ones you're going to hear preached on a lot out of the book of James is, right, I will prove to you my faith by my works. Right? I'm not working for faith. Because of my faith, I do the work. Well, that's what he's dealing with here in these verses. He says, verse number 22, be doers of the word. Well, what does that mean? You believe it enough to actually go out and put foot on pavement and do what the word teaches. Right? Not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Okay? We're going to pick on Josh and Brittany. I'm sure many a times, but Josh has been driving down the road, and Brittany reminds him, hey, the speed limit's this. I know, I know, I know. He knows it. He's heard it probably his entire life. Right? But just because he knows it doesn't mean that he believes he has to follow the speed limit. He knows what the speed limit is. The difference is he don't do the speed limit. Right? Well, how many times have we come into the... And the reason I can tell him that is because all the times I've told them stories in teens class about me going over the speed limit, he's the one laughing the most. So I know he does it too. Right? But we come in week after week. We hear, oh, we know that preacher. Well, you know it, but do you believe it? Because if you believed it, you'd do it. I, I know many things. I do very few. Right? I am very ornery and stubborn. I know lots of stuff. I only do the things I want to do. But if you believe something, you do it. Because if you believe it to be true, that's what the word... We can't get there yet. Back up. We tried to jump in the sixth gear. We got to get up through... Third through fifth first. All right. Verse number twenty three. For if a man for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Right? What happens if you hear the word and you don't do it? It says deceiving your own selves in verse number twenty two. But what is that deception? Well, we find out here in verse number twenty three. Beholding your face in a glass, right, in a mirror, in a shiny service. Right, if I hold that cup up at the right angle, I can get you know a hint of what I look at in the reflection. Right, but when it says beholding himself in a glass, that means understanding who you are. It's not catching a glimpse. Right, it's fully taking in who you are. Right, to go back to Sermon on the Mount. Right, Jesus said, "Cast the beam out of your own eye, before you start worrying about the moat in somebody else's." In other words, the speck of the dust, an eyelash in somebody else's eye, that's what you're focused on. Well, if you beheld yourself in a glass, and you saw that you had a beam sticking out of your eye, and you walked away without doing anything, you've deceived yourself into that. There's nothing to do. Everything is perfect with what I saw in the mirror. No, if you beheld who you really were in the glass, if you really saw who you we all got things we can work on. Right? And we're not talking about wrinkles and bags under the eyes. Right? It's a spiritual application. I'm not telling you to go get Botox. All right? But he's saying, if you truly, spiritually looked in the mirror, he says, you're telling me that if you believe the word, there's nothing for you to improve on? He says, you have to deceive yourself into thinking you're okay if you really hear the word. Then he goes on, verse number 24, For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, straightway forgetting what manner of man he was. What's that mean? Who you are and who you think you are are two different people. And who you saw in the mirror didn't change your opinion of who you think you are. Anybody heard it? Well, I'm not perfect, but... You know what that but means? You think you're better. I know we're all not perfect. But I don't go around telling people I'm not perfect just to tell them what's wrong with their life. Some people use it as a license. 
Well, I'm not perfect, but here's what I think. I don't care what you think. Honestly, 99.9% .9 of the time, I don't care what other people think. You know why I don't care what other people think? Because most of the time, people think a whole lot different than what the Bible thinks. I care what God says on it. Now, if what you believe lines up with what God says on it, that's not what you believe, that's just what God said. I care what God said. Whether you believe it or not is irrelevant to me. That's what God said. But just being honest. What's the absolute and final authority for your life? What God said. That's what the word is. Right? In this chapter, James refers to the Bible as the engrafted word. You know what that means? It's been growing ever since the beginning. And God just keeps taking, you know, spiritual men that he overshadowed with the Holy Ghost and he took their words and he engrafted it into the living word of God. Right? It is alive. Well, verse number 22, be doers of the word. Doesn't say be doers of the sermon. Be doers of the song. Be doers of the campaign. Be doers of the project that the church announces. Be doers of all the different things that that church has going on. No, we should do all of those things because we are a doer of the word. Why does the church launch out and do things? to further accomplish the Great Commission. Right? Sometimes to reward those that have been faithful to do those. They, I mean, we just sent the kids to camp. Why did it? Because they've spent all year long not only going to school, but every Sunday night coming in being students of the Bible. They've been faithful. They devoted themselves to it. And the church wanted to say, we're proud of the fact that you care about learning the Word of God. Right? We wanted to show them that, hey, it pays off to do what God says. We love you. Go have a good time. Right? And your parents probably deserve a break too. We didn't tell them that. But right, give your parents a little break too. Come on in. The teens found out that they don't have a Sunday school teacher today. James chapter number one. That's where we're at. Be you doers of the word. Well, what is the word? When you really break it down, okay, I mean, I've heard Bible, take the letters in the word Bible, expand it out, right? Basic instructions before leaving earth. No, it's more than that. The Bible isn't instructions. No, this is, this is you know, holy law. Right? This is what God framed the universe off of. This is who he is made into word form. That's what Jesus said. Go read the book of John. In the beginning was the Word, capital W. And the Word was God, Word was with God. Right? Word became flesh. Why? So that we could see manifest the very words of God. And then, long before Christ showed up and after Christ went back to heaven, he preserved the written Word of God so that you would know what God said. Who Christ was. Which, who was Christ? Christ was everything God said he was going to be. Right? The Word is not a manual. It's not a guidebook. No, this is the very words of an almighty God that were preserved for you to know what God expects from you. Well, in this dispensation, what does God expect from you? He expects everyone to believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, become saved. Then, according to your Bible, become a member of a local called-out Bible-believing church. Right, that the Holy Ghost leads you to, not just one that you decided you wanted to hit your cart to. Right, and then once you're there, to live out, right, as the Apostle Paul, work out your own salvation. To do the word that was put inside of you. Right, well, it says, if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, we see a contrast. You can hear, but not do. Doesn't the Bible say in the last days there'd be a famine for the hearing of the word of God? Didn't say it'd be a famine for preaching. Didn't say that there'd be a famine for, you know, more resources and access and availability of the gospel than there has ever been. But yet there's a famine for hearing. It's more available today than it ever has been at any point 
throughout all of history, and yet, I dare say, there are fewer people hearing it today. But yet here it says, you hear the word, but if you're not a doer of it, you deceive yourself. So even in a time where there's a famine for hearing, James says, you can hear and not do. It's a shame that there are people out there that don't hear. How much more of a shame that we come in week after week and we do hear, but we don't let it impact us. You know why a famine for the hearing of the word is such an awful thing? Because if people don't hear it, they're going to die and go to hell for all of eternity because they don't know that there was an almighty, perfect Savior that came, lived 33 and a half years of sinless perfection, died on the cross to pay their sin debt, and then offers to them a free salvation. That he got up to show that he was victorious over death, hell, and the grave. That's why it's a shame for the fame and the hearing. But how much more of a shame is it that when we do hear, we don't let it impact us? There are so few people that hear it. Right? Despite our best efforts. Despite the will of God that none should perish and that all should come to repentance. But those that do hear it, don't do anything with it. Let me put it to you this way. What if it's like in the days of Elijah? Okay, in fact, I guarantee you this is what them jokers, the prophets of Baal, were thinking. He told them to go fill up water pots three times and pour it on top of the sacrifice. There had been a drought for three years. Water, hard to come by. Those wells that used to go down to groundwater, they're dried up. Because you know where groundwater comes from? Rainwater. Drought, no water. Yet he wants three big, he said, go fill up these vessels. Then he wants to go fill it up two more times on top of that. And he's pouring it out on the ground. They think, what a waste. They think, you know how many families need that water right now, Elijah? He says, God said do it, go do it. Little day know, a big old storm was coming later that day. Right, but we have the well, water of life. We think it's a pity that people don't come and drink of the water of life freely we say hey come taste and see that the Lord is good well why would they when people come into church every week grab a cup full of it and then dump it out as they're walking out the door they hear it but they don't believe it because that was it. if you believe it you're going to do it right, you may be out of your mind okay, psychotic but if you thought that there was a spider on the back of your head and you believed it, you'd do everything you could to get that thing off of it. You may be crazy, but if you believed it, you'd do it. Right? Just being honest. But if we all believed that there was an imminent attack that was going to happen and we knew where it was going to happen, we wouldn't go there. Why? Because we believed it was going to happen. If you don't believe it, that's when you disregard it. Because what's this, somebody that hears the word and doesn't do it, it's like looking at yourself in a mirror, knowing what you need, and then walking out and forgetting all about it. Say, nah, I'm okay the way that I am. You have to be deceived not to believe the word of God. Why didn't Eve cling to what God said? Because she was deceived, beguiled by the serpent. Okay, well, why don't people... I mean, who did James write the book of James to? Save people. He wrote it to the church. He's saying, you received it at one point, and you believed it to get saved. He says, but you got to continue believing it. Right? To not believe the Word of God, you need somebody to tell you that it's not true and to believe it. Well, who's doing the deceiving? According to James chapter number 1, verse number 22, you deceive your own self. You have to convince yourself not to believe the Word of God. You know what your new creature inside of you wants to do? Believe the Word of God. Is not greater, he, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world? I mean, we just heard about it last week, about dying out to self, how to become victorious over the flesh. Everything in you wants to believe the Word of God. 
Well, what does believe it mean? To go out and do it. The new creature wants to be the creature that God made it into. So in order to not do the Word of God, what you got to do? you got to deceive yourself into not believing it. Okay, so follow, follow with me here. Been doing a little bit of reading. There was a guy one time that said, if you don't get where I'm going here, I staunchly disagree with this statement. But he did say that there was only one Christian and his name was Jesus. Hogwash. The word Christian means Christ-like, not Christ. There was only one Christ and his name was Jesus. I'll agree with you on that one. Right? In fact, take that down, you know, take it to the bank. It's settled. Not only here, his word's forever settled in heaven. And there's a half that hasn't been told. Guess what all of it says? Jesus was Christ. Is Christ, will always be Christ. Okay? No disagreement there. But the very word Christian means to be Christ-like. Christ could not be Christ-like because he was Christ. Christian does not mean that you are the exact image of Christ. It means that your life resembles what Christ taught. Right? If there were not Christians, the word Christian never would have been invented. Because Christians didn't invert, invent the word Christians. The people at Antioch called churchgoers Christians because their life looked like Christ did. Right? So, there's my little discourse on that. But some people, well, we can't be perfect. Doesn't mean that you can't believe what God said and go out and do it. God knew that you wouldn't be perfect. Yet he told you to do it anyway. You know what that means? You're able to do it. He doesn't allow us to be tempted above what we're able. You know why? Because he knows you can handle it. So he says, go out and live for me. Regardless of temptation. Because what do you have to do? Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. You don't have to fight him. Right? You don't have to go out there and outwit him. You just got to stand there and say, hey, I ain't backing down. In fact, said it before, heard it preached my whole life. I'll say it again. Right? What did Jesus use to resist the devil, to rebuke him? The word. You know why? Because the devil can't argue with the word. That's why he has to deceive people away from the Bible in order to get them to do what he wants them to do. Why do you think there's been such an attack on the Bible since its inception? Because if you get people to this, they'll believe it. That's why he's got to deceive them out of it. But what do you have to do to yourself to keep yourself from doing the Word of God? You've got to deceive yourself out of believing it. What's that deception? Well, I know that's the right thing to do, but I don't need to do that right now. Why? Well, that's for people that are older than me. Says who? Well, that's for people... If I was younger, I'd do that. Well, what's wrong with doing it when you're older? I did that when I had a need for it. Well, why don't you have a need for it now? It's the Word of God. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever because it is Him. Right? Well, one day I'd like to get to a point where I can do that. Why can't you do it now? Do you understand that there are no like graduation ceremonies in Christianity? You don't have to you know, prove yourself for so long before God gives you a little gold star. It says, okay, now you can go on to learning these things. No, he says do. He doesn't say take off chunks and you know, God's going to give you little by little what he wants you to work on. But if there's something in the Word of God, it's right for you to do. Don't care who you are. Don't care where you come from. Don't care where you live. Don't care how far you drive to come to church. Don't care what school you go to. Don't care where you work. Don't care about any of that. It's always right to do what God says. You have to deceive yourself out of the fact that God wants you to do it. Because you know who this Bible's written to? Everybody. You've got to deceive yourself into thinking that God didn't write this with love just for you. He made a promise that His Word, forever settled in heaven, you know what that means? If nobody else ever picked it up, He still would have given you the opportunity to pick it up. Why? Because He wrote it for you. I make jokes all the time, right? You can't have this one because it's got my name on it. But you know the real reason you can't have this one? Because it's mine. He said, well, you bought it. No, I didn't. It was given to me as a birthday present. 
Well, somebody bought it. True. But you know who gave it? God. He gave it to me. It's mine. You can't have it. Right? I don't want yours. He gave that to you. I want mine. In fact, I got a couple. You can't have them either because that's the ones where I take notes. This one's for preaching out of. It's nice, clean pages. It don't have nothing written on it to distract me. Right? Can't have this one. Can't have the one with the notes in it either. And you can't have the one on the iPad because there's more notes on that one. What do we say? If you believe it, you do it. You know why you brush your teeth every morning? Because you believe if you don't, you're going to get gingivitis and cavities and everything else. You know why some people don't brush their teeth in the morning? They don't believe that bad things are going to happen if they don't. Well, you say, well, they're just lazy or they're just dirty. No, they don't believe that bad things happen when you don't brush your teeth. Right? Here's the thing. Even if you're skeptical, you're going to err on the side of caution and say, well, it'd be better just not avoid it altogether. Right? At least I'll have better smelling breath. Well, if you believe that brushing teeth is a good thing, what are you going to do? You're going to brush your teeth. Right? If you believe that being cleanly right, is a good thing, you're going to take showers. Just how it's going to work. You may take a bath, right? But there ain't a bathtub that, I, since I've been about 12, that's been big enough to hold me. Yeah, well, if you believe it, you do it. You know why some people don't eat sugar? I don't associate with them people. But, you know why some people don't eat sugar? Because they believe that sugar bad for them. You know why some people don't do this or they don't do that? Because they believe that there's a reason to do it. Some people swear up and down. I'll never buy that kind of car again. Why? Because they're garbage. They believe it. They're not going to buy that car again. But you say, well, are they right? or It doesn't matter. We're talking about belief. Because what are we talking about believing? The Word. It's right. You don't have to worry about it. But if there's one thing you do not have, two things you don't have to worry about in this world. Okay? If you're saved, you're saved. The Bible says these things have I written that you may know that you're the sons of God. God wants you to know that your salvation nailed down. You know what He also wants you to know? You never have to doubt that everything in this is true. It's infallible. So if we know it's true and we hear it, why don't we believe it? Let me, let me just put something to you. Keep in mind, I've been preaching this to myself for like three weeks. Okay? Reading stuff, beating myself up about it. When was the last time you told somebody Jesus was coming back? Because if you believed it, you'd tell people. If you believe that it was soon and very soon that Christ was coming back and that those that die without Christ are going to spend all of eternity in hell, you tell people. Because I don't care who you are. I don't want anybody to die and go to hell. If you believe that hell is what the Bible teaches, a place of eternal suffering, weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth, where the worm dieth not, where people's backs are broke, for it's a bottomless pit without light, where fire burns so hot that it doesn't even give off light. That the Bible says that there is no ligand, there's no moment of relief for all of eternity. That the rich man just said, just but a drop of water to cool my tongue. But Father Abraham says he can't do it. You are in torments, plural. And then, the only time that they won't be in hell is when they stand before an almighty God in His judgment, which is going to be worse than being in hell. And then they're cast off into the lake of fire for all of eternity, which hell is thrown into the lake of fire. How much hotter does a fire have to be in order to eat up a place that's of eternal torment of fire? If you believe they were going there, you tell them. You may not tell them that they're going to hell, but you tell them that Jesus is coming soon and that they need to hear the gospel. When was the last time you told somebody that 
the best place to go to church is the Emmanuel Baptist Church. Because if you believed it, you tell them. If you believe that people that you know need what happens around here, you tell them. If you believed, according to your Bible, that God puts you where you live around the people that you live around for the sole purpose of you shining a light to them, then you'd go out and shine a light. I heard a guy this week. He was talking. I don't know if he's a Christian or not. But he said somebody walked up to him the other day and asked him if he believed in God. He said, I don't think that anybody walking the face of the earth can make that claim because nobody lives the way that the Bible says that they're supposed to live. They said, if you believe in God to say that I believe that God is true, everything that God did and everything that God wrote is true, he said nobody would live the life that they live the way that they live it. If you truly believed. If you believe that God puts you on this earth to tell other people, why wouldn't you sell everything that you own, live off of that as long as you could, and go out and tell as many people as you could about the one that could save their soul? Because if you believed it, you'd do it. Does Brother Jordan say sell everything? You, no, because I know it's unfeasible. The Bible says if a man don't work, he shouldn't eat. I understand that God gave you the abilities to provide for yourself, provide for your family, so that you could have a place that God gave you, so that you could have a means to buy the food that God gave you. Right? But I also understand that in the midst of all that, He still expects us to go out and tell. He never promised that life would be easy, but He did promise that He'd be with us to help us go. I firmly believe, Brother Ed, I'll talk to Brother Ed for a second, firmly believe that the reason so many Christians are miserable is because they're not out doing what God wants them to do, and God's not going to give them joy for not doing what God wants them to do. The joy of the Lord is our strength. But whose joy is it? It's His. They say, well, I go out and I work hard all week and I'm trying to provide for my family. Nothing wrong with any of those things. But if you believe that God, first and foremost, had a hold of your spirituality, God looks at that first, you do what God expects you to do. Do you know why some people come out when nobody's looking? Right? When it's hot, when it's humid, when it's raining, when the sun's already down, and they do things around the house of God because they believe that it's important to take care of the house of God. Which, by the way, that is right. Right? This should be but in my eyes, that every true Bible-believing church, house of God should always be in immaculate condition. I understand sometimes you turn the light on and don't realize that the light bulb not on until the light switch goes on, but I believe you fix it as soon as you can. Why? Because this isn't our, this is God's house. He deserves our best efforts. He deserves the best that we could you know, provide and build in the building. Am I saying everything needs to be 24 karat gold? No, but it needs to be made of our best efforts. It needs to be made of the best that we can get our hands on. Why? Because it's its house. I'm not saying every church needs to be a Solomon's temple. That'd be impossible. You go study out how much it costs to make Solomon's temple nowadays. Good luck. You'd have to rob the Catholics all the gold that they stole from the people that they killed all throughout history. Now, that's true, by the way, but you say, Brother Jordan, I come to church, I listen. Go home, I listen to YouTube, or Sunday school classes that I wasn't in, or I go home and I listen to the services that, you know, from a year ago, or, you know, from other churches that we know to have lives. I just try to get as much Bible, well, you can put as much Bible in you as you want, not going to help you any unless you do. You can be in every church service in all of northern Kentucky for every week, you know, all of greater Cincinnati, always be in a church service every night where they're preaching the Bible the way that God wants it to be preached. Not going to help you any unless you do. But why don't you do? Because you don't believe. So let's really get into why don't people believe the Word? 
Uh, some people just don't believe because they don't want to. They got a pride problem. You know what keeps you from doing things when you think that you don't need to do it? Right. For instance, there are some people who get old and they realize, oh no, I never put any money into this thing called a 401k. Right? You know why people didn't put in money into a 401k? Because they wanted, I don't know, bigger engines or boats or skidoos or I don't know what people. They wanted lightsabers. Let's go with that one, okay? I've only got two, but someone want to buy all the lightsabers. And, well, guess what? They didn't put that money in the 401k because they didn't think they was going to get old one day and not be able to work and then need to live off of what they had saved. If you don't believe that you're going to get old, guess what? You're not going to save for retirement. If you believe that, well, one day I'm going to break it big and I don't need to save money now, well, good luck with that. But if you break it big, you can buy all them things then. Save now. Oh, well. You know why some people don't? You know why some people go with, like, with work offers you different health care plans? You know, they always go with, oh, I'm going to go with this one because it's the cheapest. You know why people go with that one? Because they think they're never going to get sick. If you believe you're going to get sick, you're going to take the one that's going to save you the most money when you go to the doctor. Mm-hmm. But if you think, well, oh, this is a high deductible, but I'm never going to meet that deductible. Until you meet the deductible, and then you got to pay it all out of pocket. Right? Some people, you know why Jordan didn't used to do his homework? We'll do this one for the kids. It's not because I believed it. I knew I could get away with not doing homework and still get an A in the class. I was cheating the system. I just didn't feel like doing it. Right? Well, you say, well, that's a problem with the, this, how could you not do homework and then still get a good grade? Because everything's messed up in the public school systems. Okay? But that's a whole different Sunday school lesson that we ain't going to get on today. Okay? But I found out long time ago, right, for better or worse, I found out that God gave me a blessing where my brain's like a sponge. I don't have to be around something for long to pick it up. Does that mean I've mastered it? Nope, but I know enough that, you know, a week down the road, I can sit down and make up a whole bunch of stuff on an essay, still get a good grade. Right? Just throw out keywords. I'll just soak it all up. Right? And those of you that don't believe me, remember the last time that in Sunday school I brought up a random fact about something. Where'd I learn that? Just watching TV. Right? I don't go out and study all that stuff. That's something I watched when I was like 11 on the Discovery Channel and how it's made. Most likely. What is that? That's just the way that I was. You know what I learned when I got to college? Not having study habits really bit me. Because I had to learn them real quick. Because there's a lot of stuff I didn't know, and I wasn't in that class every day. I was in that class for an hour and a half, three times a week. Right? I had to go and spend time with the stuff. Well, guess what? I don't like reading. Right? And there wasn't a discovery channel for here's what you need to learn in college class this week. You know why I didn't develop those? I didn't think I needed them. What I find out? I needed them. Right now, go figure. Guess what my job is? I research things. You know what that is? That's a lot of study. Right? Except I like doing this kind of stuff. Don't like studying math. There's crystal line in here. We'll talk bad about math. When letters start getting into the numbers subject, things bad. Right? No go there. Letters English, numbers math. Keep them separate. But, if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he deceiveth himself. Well, do, not just because you believe you don't need it. Some people deceive themselves into, I don't need that now. It's a timing issue. Well, why don't you need it? Why do you think that tomorrow's a good day to need it and not today? But take unto yourselves the whole armor of God. It doesn't say take unto yourselves the whole armor of God Monday through Friday. 
Saturday's a Sabbath day. You should rest like God did. And then on Sunday, you got to put your church clothes on. Don't need the armor. That's not what the Bible says. Take unto yourselves. You know what that means? Take it and don't let it go. Why don't you think that you need it every day? You think that God's got a hedge around you so good that nothing can touch you? Go read the book of Job. God's hedge of protection can be removed. Not because you did anything wrong, but because God wants to show what he's put inside of you. He wants you to do, not just when it's good, but all the time. You know why the world doesn't believe what we preach? Because most of the people that hear it don't go out and do it. They think, well, if they needed it, they would do it. But they're telling me I need it. And yet they don't even do it. You know somebody that hears and doesn't do is? They're a hypocrite. Because again, you know who we're talking about here? Church people. Saved, on their way to heaven. That's who James wrote this book to. Well, you know what those people were doing? They were coming to church. How else would they hear? Somebody that come to church and walk out different is a hypocrite. If you're saved. Every time we come to church, we're supposed to get closer to God. We're supposed to lay more things down and say, Lord, I understand that you don't want these things in my life, so I freely give them to you so that you'll replace them with yourself. We're supposed to come in and give back to God. We're always supposed to walk out different than the way that we came in. Right? But yet, if we walk in and walk out the same, it's not because we didn't hear. I mean, we're at this church. You're going to hear about the Bible. Right? Doesn't even matter if there's no preaching. There's going to be a whole lot of Bible going on around church service. Right? You're going to hear it. So if you walk out and don't do it, it's because you're a hypocrite. I believe that I need to be here, but I don't believe that I need what I'm hearing right now. I'm coming for what I'm going to need tomorrow. Well, God wants, you, wants to give you what you need today. God is always a present God. Right? That's why he said, you know, Moses said, what, who are you? And he said, I am that I am. He's saying, I'm here because I'm here. I'm God. I'm always here. And because I'm God, that's why I'm always here. God is always concerned about now. The psalmist didn't write, tomorrow is the day that the Lord will give. No, today is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Not in what he's going to do tomorrow. Not in what he did yesterday. We're going to rejoice and be glad in what God made for us today. Why? Because God's focused on today. More importantly, God's focused on what he wants you to do today. You know those that do or those that believe. I mean, the woman came to Jesus and said, Lord, I believe, but help mine unbelief. You know why that's such a powerful statement? She believed that she needed Jesus. She believed that Jesus had what she needed. But when she's saying, Lord, help mine unbelief, she's saying there's a whole lot of me that doesn't understand. There's a whole lot in me that doesn't want to come and about to admit that I don't have any control or power over my life, that I'm not the one in charge of my life, that... Long before I ever was, you knew exactly where I'd be today with all the decisions that I had already made, and yet you still choose to come down and say, I love you. There's a lot of me that don't understand, don't believe, so Lord, help my unbelief. The reason people hear and don't do is because they got more unbelief than they got belief. Well, what's unbelief? Well, it's a lack of faith, one could say. But you had enough faith to get saved, getting church members. People on their way to heaven, they have faith. But what keeps them from exercising the faith? Unbelief. Well, why don't people believe? Because they believe people more than they believe God. That's unbelief. Now see, a lot of preachers have preached wrong things throughout the years, but you want to know why that hurt churches? Because the church believed more in what a man was saying than what the Bible said. You're saying, well, the preacher's wrong. Yeah. 
But if they did what God told them to do, they'd have tried the spirits to know whether they was good or evil. They'd have been versed in what Bible doctrine was long before that joker ever came around. Are you saying, is it their fault? Not saying that they did the, the wrong thing, but I'm saying if they believed, they'd have already done all them things. If they'd have prayed about it, asked who God wanted to be the pastor, God don't recommend somebody that don't preach God's book. All I'm saying is, some people care more about what the preacher says than what the Bible says. Around here, those two are synonymous. But not always the case. Some people just assume that if it's got the word God or Lord in it, that the song's about Jesus. Not always the case. Some people just assume that if someone says, well, I'm a Christian, that that means they're a good person. No, most people claim the title when it benefits them, and then they run as far away from it when they throw somebody under the bus, save their own skin. Talking about hearers of the word. Not hearers of Biden, don't do anything that joker tells you to do. Just err on the side of caution. You'd be like, well, we'll wait and see what happens. Some people have a whole lot of unbelief because they got two masters. You'll love one and hate the other. You might be saved on your way to heaven, but if you like, oh, we can go look at all the people. First, there's diatrophies who love to have the preeminence. Right? But then he also said, I can't remember the Joker's name right now, have forsaken me loving this present world. Right? What's that mean? Well, he loved Jesus, but he loved the world more than he loved Jesus. He loved to live like the world. And what that bring? A whole lot of unbelief. I think we said it last week. You're capable of deceiving yourself in almost anything. Well, I'm stronger than this. Well, if you were, you'd be able to lay it down. Don't care what it is. If you're stronger than the TV remote, you can turn TV off. If you're stronger than cell phone, you can put cell phone down. If you're stronger than the needle, you can put the needle down. So if you don't, what's that mean? You're not stronger than it. If you believe that you needed help, you'd ask for it. Well, if you believe you need to do what the Word says, you'd do it. So we're really going to stand here today and make the argument that the Bible's not true? Lord, help you. Not one. Lord, help you around here, especially if you mention it to me. Right, I still got a few of them debate chops from back in the day. Right? But, you're really going to stand around here and say that, well, the Bible's true, but that part don't pertain to me. You're really going to stand here and say, well, I just don't have the time to do it. Well, that may be true, but is that God's fault? Are you like Martha? You've made yourself so busy you don't have time for Jesus. Man, just being honest. Or is the fact today that you've got all the time in the world to do whatever you want. You're completely capable of doing whatever you set your mind to. But yet we don't do because we don't believe. I mean, y'all do understand Jesus could roll open the sky right now and call us all out of here. Right? Well, it, he didn't yesterday. Doesn't mean he won't today. Doesn't mean he won't tomorrow. Jesus don't even know when he's coming back. Only a father knows. You know what that means? Jesus ready to come back. He's waiting. He's just waiting for the word. Then he's he coming. If you believe that, you'd tell people he's coming soon. But when is soon? I don't know, but it's sooner than you think. Do you really believe that somebody could die and go into all of eternity today? You tell them. Not out of judgment, not out of pity, out of love, out of compassion. I don't care who you are. 
You're telling me you would want to look, stand before God, at the judgment seat, where you got given account of the deeds done in your body. And God says, well, why didn't you witness to this person? Well, I, I didn't like them. Then you're going to have to stand while that person, you're in the jury box, while that person stands before God, tries to explain why they don't deserve to go to hell, and God says the blood wasn't applied. And then their blood's required at your hands. You're telling me you want that for anybody? I don't care how annoying they are. You know what that is? You're looking on the outside. You're not looking at what they need. Because if you did those things that you've heard preached, the Bible says don't look at what they are, look at what they can be with God. Look at where you were and see where God brought you to. Imagine what He can do with that. Hate the sin, but love the sinner. Why? Because even though sin will cause you to die and go to hell, no one has to. It's already been taken care of. They just got to receive it. If you believed it, you'd go tell them. You know why some people have a lot of unbelief? Because of fear. You know what fear does? Fear immobilizes you. Fear will cause you to do nothing. Or it'll cause you to do the thing that you think keeps you the safest. Well, if you're going to fight a spiritual warfare for God, you're going to be in a lot of non-safe situations. You're not going to be comfortable all the time. You're not going to be singing, you know, onward Christian soldiers all the time. Sometimes you're going to be praying, Lord, get me out of this. But you know why you got to go there? Because that's where the warfare is. If you want safe and comfy and bubbly all the time, you're going to have to be on so much Xanax that nobody can make you depressed. Because that's not what life is. Jesus was acquainted with sorrow. In fact, it was a friend, right, of pain and suffering. In the flesh and both spirit, he was grieved every day, walking around a sin-cursed earth, being God in flesh. But yet, why did he endure it? Why did he suffer it? Because he loved you. Well, why do we go to the front lines? Because we love Him. Final reason. People don't do. Why they don't believe. Because they don't believe that they have to love God as much as He loved them. How much did God love you all the way? Well, how much, God does, how much love does God expect back? All of it. Is He saying that He's the only thing you can love in your life? No, because He said that if you seek... First, the kingdom of heaven. He'll add all these desires of your heart. What are those? The things that you love, things that you cherish. He's not saying, here's the thing about love. You either love or you don't. You can't love somebody 50%. You either love someone or you don't. Right? Just true. I mean, I, those are people you love to be around. There are people that, uh, well, I appreciate what they do for you know these people or that people, so I'll let them come to the park. You don't love that person. You put up with that person. That is not love. Better. Oh, they're my family member from this. So oh, yeah, they can come. You don't love that person. You know you're supposed to love that person, but you don't. Because well, if you loved them, yeah, sure, come on over. No, you don't have to bring anything. I don't care if you're here for five minutes, five hours. I love you. Just want to see you. Well, see, God's just saying, love God. You can love other things, but you got to love God first. Because you know what happens when you don't love God? You don't stop, or you don't you stop believing God. It'll bring unbelief. You'll start doubting whether God even cares about you. Hello? You know how much of this says that God not only cares about you, that the Son prays to the Father for you? That He loved you with an everlasting love? That He wants you to cast your cares upon Him because He cares for you? We can go all day long just about how much God loves you. Not somebody else, you. But yet you get away from God, you stop loving God first in your life, and guess what happens? You'll start doubting the things that God said. 
All because why? Because you don't have the right love. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.